Turville. Speaking to the bill, Mr. Speaker. Gentleman has floor. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Ladies and gentlemen, this bill heads in the wrong direction. Instead of debating ways to make it easier to use an antiquated 19th century method of executing human beings, we ought to be talking about ways to uh, make our system more humane. Mr. Speaker, uh, the reason that this legislation has arisen is because Virginia is increasingly isolated in the world and how it deals with prisoners and how it punishes people. The reality is, is there are manufacturers in Europe who have now refused to continue to sell us lethal injection drugs because they're not supposed to be used to kill people. They're supposed to be used to treat people. Now, the other states that have faced this problem have turned to American compounding pharmacies to deal with, to deal with the shortage of the drugs. And there's been two executions since then that have used alternate drugs made in America to do what is necessary under the current law. Virginia, if it wants to continue to, do, to execute people, should follow that course of action instead of continuing to enable the electric chair, which is nicknamed Old Sparky. Um, I once saw Old Sparky when I took a tour of Greensville back in 1993. It's a creepy device. I wouldn't encourage anybody to go look at it. It's been sitting there since 1908, since we started using it. What we ought to be debating here is whether to retire old Sparky, not giving her more clients, which is what this does. Folks, electrocution is antiquated. It was invented, so to speak, in the 1880s in a fight between Thomas Edison and George Westinghouse trying to figure out whose, current, whose form of current was more lethal. And actually, the early death penalty litigation was, in fact, funded by Westinghouse and Edison trying to point that each other's electricity was more uh, lethal to the other. Virginia, just so you understand, when this is adopted, this, this, this method of doing this was adopted around the same time we discovered these things called movies, or the same time that prohibition was, was in vogue and, and, and they invented Coca-Cola. And since then, our society has evolved, technology has evolved, we have, we have developed more humane ways to do this. Aside from it being unnecessary to do this, because the drugs are available through these compounding pharmacies, and aside from it being antiquated, this technology, electrocution, folks, has never actually been tested scientifically or otherwise. You can't exactly take a human being and say, how'd it go? How'd it feel? Right? And that, there's no science behind this. It's all been trier by error. And they watch the, you know, they watch bodies catch on fire and blood boil out of people and eyeballs pop out. Every once in a while that happens. But nobody's ever in fact verified that electrocution is in fact painless, kills people without torture, kills people without brutalizing them. But the reality is that it does. And for years they didn't have a better way to do it and so they kept doing it. In 1994, this body chose the preference lethal injection, and that's the way most people have been, most prisoners have been executed since then. And we ought to head in that direction instead of turning backwards. Folks, most states in this country are going the other direction. 85% of the states in the United States that had electrocution have now abolished it. There are only four states in America that still do this to prisoners. It's us, Alabama, Florida, and South Carolina. That's it. In fact, the last reason I'll give you that we need to, to reject this bill is that continuing to keep electrocution on the books and, in fact, making it forcing prisoners to be electrocuted if we can't find lethal injection when they choose it, in fact, jeopardizes capital punishment in this state. Challenges to this are more and more common, and it's been rejected now by two state Supreme Courts. And they're hardly bastions of liberalism. In 2008, the Supreme Court of Nebraska found that electrocution was cruel and unusual. In 2001, the Supreme Court of Georgia found that electrocution was cruel and unusual punishment. And by forcing people to be executed by a means by which they didn't choose, which is what this bill will do if we can't find the drugs and doesn't say what standards 
you know, what standards we have to go and look around for the drugs or what? It just says that the, the head of prisons can just certify you can't find them. But by forcing people, it puts our, st our system in jeopardy. The Supreme Court said in 2008 that in Bayes v. Rees, the U.S. Supreme Court, not the state one, that proffered alternatives to a method of execution must effectively address a substantial risk of serious harm. To qualify, the alternative procedure must be feasible, readily implemented, and in fact, significantly reduce a substantial risk of severe pain. If a state refuses to adopt an alternative in the face of these documented advantages without a legitimate peniological justification for adhering to its current method of execution, then a state's refusal to change its method can be viewed as cruel and unusual punishment under the Eighth Amendment of the United States Constitution. Last week, over in the Senate, on the other side, the other body, the gentleman from Norfolk who runs a funeral home related to the body, that he'd seen bodies that had been executed. He'd seen the eyeballs popping out. He'd seen the burnt flesh. He'd seen the singed hair. And he said anybody that says that electrocution is not torture is dreaming. I just want to remind the body that when someone's given the death penalty, the state is simply charged with extinguishing a life. We're not charged with brutally torturing someone until they finally die. That's where this takes us. This state was a beacon of liberty. We were a beacon of human dignity and reason when this body adopted the Virginia Declaration of Rights in 1776. And this bill takes us in the other direction. I would encourage the body to vote against the bill.